In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take your keyboard lettering and change it into two-color lettering. And it's real easy. You do have a couple two-color letter fonts in your Melco software, but once you see how easy this is, you're going to want to take you know any font and turn it into a two-color font. So what you want to do first is create a new file and throw some lettering up on the screen. I'm just going to use something easy like ES. Just keep the block font that I have and zoom into that first letter. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to take our fill stitch tool and we're going to plot a continuous vector point around that letter Y and then use our change element type tool which is right here and add a single line center around it. The reason why we can't do this to column stitch lettering is it's all individual elements. If you broke it apart using your uh, object to wireframe tool, you'd see that the E and the Y have all different pieces in it, and if you went to the change element type, it would take a uh, single line center and throw it around every piece, and that's just not going to do. So we have to make one continuous letter or vector point so that we can change that element type. Now, the same thing's going to happen if you take this lettering and change it into a fill stitch. It's still going to be individual elements, so that's not going to work either. So now we take our fill stitch tool, I'm going to zoom in a little closer to my Y, and I'm going to plot points around it using it as a trace line. And I'm going to try not to do it sloppy. Okay, of course you'd want to take your time, I'm just trying to do this as fast as I can. Okay, now the Y is down. Go over to my E. Okay, that's almost like crazy sloppy. I know that. Now, some people have told me they like using a rollerball mouse. I still use a standard mouse. I don't know how much easier that would be. I've heard some people using one of those Wicom uh, uh, digitizing pens and a tablet. That seems pretty intriguing. Still, this takes uh, takes a while to plot some points, but you see that it's easy. And if you haven't used this fill stitch tool yet, you're going to want to take a look at one of my tutorials to find out exactly how to use this. And I am done. Make that into a fill stitch. Now that I have this, uh, all these letters changed into a fill stitch or plotted as a fill stitch, I go back to my lettering and delete it. Now, quickly, I'm going to go into each letter and just add a column stitch around it. But what I might want to do first, actually it's a single line center, I might want to go into my single line center tool, right click on it so that I can change my properties. Now the properties I want to change, I want to make this column or single line center just a little bit thinner. So I'm going to change it to 15. And now when I click on my Y, go to my change element type, I'm going to put single line center and add. It's going to add a single line center around it. And if I double click it, it opens up at the single line tab and you can see that it's 15. So I globally changed uh, the single line center for e every single time that I use it. Or for every letter, letter that I use it on, it's going to be at 15 points. So I'm going to just do all of these quickly. Single line center, add. I might have to go back and edit some of them. Single line center, add. And if I look at it real quickly, maybe turn it into 3D, I can get a real good look. I can see that this part of the E and over here on this part of the Y needs a little fixing. Now you can edit in 3D also. Sometimes it's easier to do it not in 3D. You can see these single line centers can get a little wacky. You just got to pull them around and play with them a little bit. There you go. I can see that's a little better blend. Nope, that didn't change it. Let's see. I'll move this piece up. Move that down. Let's see. Yeah, sometimes you got to play with them. That's a little bit better. We're talking small lettering here. And go over to this corner. Move this lettering over. Maybe I'll take that point and I'll just delete it. There we go. That worked. Like I said, you just got to play with these single line centers, especially around corners, so that you can get them to work. Now, this really st still looks messy. I shouldn't leave it like that. I'll take some of these points and I'll delete them. Because the points that we created for our fill stitch may not work great with this single line center tool. And that's the reason for this. 
and that's a little bit better but for the sake of just showing you again you can play with this till the cows come home the point is is you might have to go in and edit them hopefully you don't but it's as easy as just plotting it out and adding a column or that single line center around it so let me zoom back out the S looks pretty good but what we're going to want to do now is we're going to make a color change in between the lettering and the single line center that's around them. So if I want to do it in one swoop, like do all the fill stitches, then the column stitches, I would grab this lettering, drag it on top of my S, and now you can see they're separated and put a color change in between them. Now if I wanted to do Y, then color change, E, then color change, S, then color change, I'd grab this single line center, click on the top, put a color change in between that, the E, move this E up, put a color change in between it, and put a color change from the E to the S, and there you have it. So you can see it's not that hard, and it's something you should definitely try. If you have a wacky lettering um, that you'd like to add uh, a border stitch to it, don't be afraid. It's as simple as putting a fill stitch around it and changing the element type and perhaps doing a little bit of editing.